Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionators, where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic, aka Animated Medical Mnemonics for medical students, nursing students, dental students, PA students, etc. Use the link in the description box to try it for free. Today, we're gonna continue the series of Picmonic Microbiology. So, let's get started. I've organized this series for you in two playlists. The first playlist is called Metacosis Picmonic, the second one is called Microbiology. In video number one, we talked about Actinomyces, Listeria, Corynebacteria, and Nocardia. In part two, it was the Clostridia. Part three, Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, and Streptococcus pneumonia. In part four, it was about the Streptococci. In video 5, we talked about Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus cereus, Mycobacterium leprae, and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. In part 6, it was the Neisseria and Moraxella. What did Moraxella cause? Otitis, sinusitis, bronchitis, laryngitis, etc. Indeed, similarly, Haemophilus influenza can also give you otitis, laryngitis, and even meningitis, as well as epiglottitis. We'll talk today about Bordetella pertussis. We'll talk about Pastorella, Brucella, and Francisella. Droplets, droplets, cats and dogs, goat cheese, rabbit skinning. All of today's organisms are gram-negative bacteria that are coccobacilli. They are not cocci, they are not bacilli, they are kind of in between, like a short rod. Microbiology literally means the study of small life. This science deals with bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites, and that's why this field of study is divided into sub-branches, bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. The scientist Graham discovered a stain that can classify bacteria into gram-positive and gram-negative. If you stain purple, you're gram-positive. If you're staying pink, you are gram-negative. Each is divided into cocci and bacilli. All of today's bacteria are gram-negative coccobacilli in between. The gram-positives are cocci and rods. If it's a coccus, ask yourself, is it catalase-positive or catalase-negative? If it's a bacillus, ask yourself, is it spore-forming or non-spore-forming? The non-spore-forming gram-positive rods were discussed in video number one. The spore-forming anaerobic gram-positive bacilli were the topic of video number two of this playlist called Picmonic. The catalase-positive gram-positive cocci were the topic of video number three, and the catalase-negatives were discussed in video four. Anatomically, gram-positive rods were discussed in video 5, the Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus cereus, Mycobacterium leprae, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Pause and review. If you have any problems, please refer to previous videos in this playlist. When you're studying microbiology, the first order of business is this classification. Please bring a blank piece of paper and draw everything here with your own hands. After you draw it with your own handwriting, it's time to take it to the next level. Use the link in the description box to try Picmonic for free and get access not only to their 1,400 plus Picmonics, but also to some lovely community resources made by students for students like this wonderful chart to classify bacteria. Each bacteria has its own cute little animoji. There is a wonderful community of students at Picmonic. Gram-negative bacteria are cocci or rods. If you are coccus, let me ask you, are you diplococcus, which is a double coccus, or coccobacillus. Okay, I am diplococcus. What does that mean? Double cocci like this. Oh, then the next question is, do you ferment maltose? If the answer is yes, congratulations, you are Neisseria meningitidis. If the answer is no, congratulations, you are Neisseria gonorrhea or Moraxilla catarallis, which causes gonorrhea and catarrhal inflammations respectively. But what if I am coccobacillus, which looks like a short rod, like this? Well, is this a rod or is this a coccus? It's hard to tell. That's why we call them coccobacilli. And they include Haemophilus influenzae, Bordetella pertussis, Pastorella multicida, Brucella, and Francisella tularensis. 
This is today's topic. Let's start with H. influenzae. This is a bacteria not to be confused with the influenza virus, which causes the flu. Let me remind you of the famous triad. Whether you're talking about sinusitis, otitis, pharyngitis, or any other upper respiratory tract infection, there are three bacteria that can cause this. And this is the famous triad. Streptococcus, pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, which is today's topic, and Moraxilla cateralis, which was last video's topic. So Haemophilus influenzae can give you sinusitis, otitis, pharyngitis, laryngitis, bronchitis, including COPD exacerbation, because as you remember, COPD includes two diseases, bronchitis and emphysema. So if you can cause bronchitis, of course you can cause COPD. Add to this otitis, sinusitis, pharyngitis, laryngitis, bronchitis, acute epiglottitis and septic meningitis. Hey, what's meningitis? Let's go back to square one. Here is your nervous system. You have central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, and peripheral nervous system, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Let's focus on the brain and the spinal cord. They are covered by three layers called meninges, such as the dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pia mater. Mater means mother in Greek like a mother hugging her baby. The baby is the brain or the spinal cord. I want to diagnose meningitis. How do I get a sample of the cerebrospinal fluid lumbar puncture? Tap the needle into the subarachnoid space, which is below the arachnoid mater, but above the pia mater. Where should I tap to keep the spinal cord alive? Keep the needle between L3 and 5. To keep the spinal cord alive, keep the needle between L3 and 5. If it's bacterial meningitis, you will find a lot of neutrophils in the cerebrospinal fluid. Bacteria, neutrophils. However, today you will meet bacteria that is unique because it is a bacteria that causes lymphocytosis. Really? Yeah. Stay tuned. Haemophilus influenzae, shown by the He-Man in flute, is a gram-negative bacteria illustrated by the gram-cracker negative devil with a coxobacilli shape, the cockeyed rod. There are two major categories of Haemophilus influenzae, including the encapsulated strains and non-encapsulated strains. Encapsulated type B Haemophilus influenzae contains a PRP capsule, the PRP capsule with a B, which is the most important virulence factor. Encapsulated species also demonstrate a positive quelling reaction, shown by the positive quail lungs. Haemophilus influenzae bacteria also releases IgA protease as a virulence mechanism, shown by the IgA apple globulin goblin with a propeller ace. Haemophilus influenzae organisms require nutrient supplementation to grow in laboratory cultures. Specifically, they grow on chocolate auger, illustrated by the chocolate bar. Chocolate auger is an enriched growth medium containing red blood cells that have been lysed. It provides growth factors like NAD, commonly called factor 5, shown by the NAD nicotine character giving a 5-hand high 5, along with hematin, commonly called factor 10, illustrated by the 10 X-factor sign held by the 10 hemen. Haemophilus influenzae can also grow in the hemolytic zone of Staph aureus on blood auger plates. This is because the hemolysis of cells by Staph aureus releases factor 5, shown by the Staph of Oreos with the NAD factor 5. To recap, Haemophilus influenzae is a gram-negative bacteria with a coxobacilli shape. In encapsulated type B Haemophilus influenzae, we see a PRP capsule, which is the most important virulence factor. These encapsulated species present a positive quellung reaction and release IgA protease. They grow on chocolate auger, which provides factor 5, or NAD, and factor 10, or hematin. Don't forget that Haemophilus influenzae can grow in the hemolytic zone of Staph aureus on blood auger plates, as blood cell hemolysis releases factor 5. Haemophilus influenzae is a gram-negative coccobacillus. Type B Haemophilus influenzae has the PRP capsule, gives you a positive quillung reaction, IgA protease, grows on chocolate agar. Factor 5 is NAD, factor 10 is hematin. The disease characteristics of Haemophilus influenzae are illustrated in this picmonic by the He-Man in flute. Haemophilus influenzae is a gram-negative coxobacilli that can cause several diseases. Type B Haemophilus influenzae can cause pneumonia, shown by the nude mona, along with the cherry red epiglottitis, shown by the mona choking on a cherry. 
Other diseases include bacterial meningitis, shown by the men in tights, and otitis media, the oats out of the ear. Haemophilus influenzae is the bacterial species most commonly isolated from airway samples during COPD exacerbations, illustrated by the COPD COP. Furthermore, this organism is the most common etiologic agent associated with epiglottitis, which has a thumbprint sign seen on x-ray, shown here by the ref amp giving a giant thumbs-up sign. Rifampin, the ref amp with purple axis, is recommended as a prophylactic treatment for individuals with intimate contact with children who develop invasive infections with type B Haemophilus influenzae. Of note, ceftriaxone, the chef triaxis, is a third-generation cephalosporin that can be used as treatment of severe cases of infection. In summary, Haemophilus influenzae is a gram-negative coxobacilli that causes pneumonia, cherry red epiglottitis, meningitis, and otitis media. It is the most common bacterial species isolated from airway samples during COPD exacerbations and is the most common etiologic agent associated with epiglottitis, which shows a thumbprint sign on x-ray. Rifampin is recommended as a prophylactic treatment for people with intimate contact with children diagnosed with type B Haemophilus influenzae, and ceftriaxone is a third-generation cephalosporin used for the treatment of severe cases. Diseases caused by Haemophilus influenzae included otitis media, meningitis, acute epiglottitis with the famous thumb print sign on x-ray. It can also cause pneumonia and COPD exacerbation. How do I treat? You treat with ceftriaxone. How do I prevent rifampin? We can remember the infectious agent known as Bordetella pertussis by recalling this scene with the border pearl tusks. Bordetella pertussis is a gram-negative bacteria because of its relatively thin peptidoglycan layer in the cell wall, shown here as the graham cracker negative devil. Classified as a coxobacillus, denoting the intermediary structure between a rod and a sphere, and pictured here as the cockeyed rod, these bacteria are short and wide. This organism grows on Bordet Zingu agar, pictured here as the border Jenga in Petri dish, which is specifically designed to optimize growth of Bordetella species. A favorite exam topic when it comes to Bordetella centers around its pathophysiology. In particular, it is important to know that the A and B components of the pertussis bacterial toxin operate by ADP ribosylation of the inhibitory, or GI, subunit of the G-protein coupling complex, recalled here by the ADP Red Bull with A-apple and BB toxin. By inhibiting GI, Dysregulation of the conversion of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, to cyclic adenosine monophosphate, CAMP, via adenylate cyclase occurs, leading to excess CAMP in a variety of tissues with the accompanying clinical signs and symptoms that we'll cover next. This is demonstrated in this picmonic by the inhibiting chains on GI Jogai, causing up arrow CAMP. One of the manifestations of this process is lymphocytosis portrayed by the lymphocytes with lymph limes because of the altered cellular signaling mechanism that allows fewer and fewer lymphocytes to enter lymph nodes and confront infectious agents, forcing them instead to remain in the bloodstream, resulting in lymphocytosis on lab analysis. The islet cells of the pancreas are another location where excess CAMP causes a disruption in homeostasis leading to an increase in insulin release with a subsequent drop in blood glucose, predisposing to hypoglycemic episodes. This is shown here by the up arrow insect syringe. The initial stage of infection is called the catarrhal phase, seen here as the catarrhal sign and infectious baby, which is the most infectious period of the illness, lasting one to two weeks and clinically presenting with nonspecific symptoms of malaise, cough, mild fever, rhinorrhea, tearing, and sneezing. The second stage is called the paroxysmal phase, portrayed by the paroxysmal sign, which is considered the predominantly symptomatic period and is characterized by paroxysms of intense coughing that can last up to several minutes. These coughing outbursts are occasionally followed by a loud, inspiratory whooping sound, which is where the colloquial name of whooping cough was derived, and is demonstrated here by the coughing baby on whoopee cushion. Treatment for Bordetella pertussis falls to macrolide antibiotics, depicted by the macaroni lights, which include erythromycin, though this should be avoided in children less than one month of age due to the increased risk of developing hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, 
azithromycin, and clarithromycin. So, to recap, let's remember that Bordetella pertussis is a gram-negative coxobacillus that grows on Bordet zengu agar. This organism produces the ADP ribosylating AB toxin that catalyzes the inhibition of the GI subunit, leading to an increase in CAMP, which causes lymphocytosis and an increase in insulin. The first one to two week period is the infectious phase called the catarrhal phase, followed by the symptomatic paroxysmal phase with the characteristic inspiratory whooping cough. Macrolide antibiotics are the treatment of choice. Next, Bordetella pertussis, a gram-negative coccobacillus, grows on the bordet jengu agar. It inhibits GI. When you inhibit the inhibitory, you are excitatory, which increases cyclic AMP. Before you know it, you get lymphocytosis, and this is unique. Very few bacteria in nature cause lymphocytosis in humans. Most bacteria cause neutrophilic leukocytosis, not lymphocytosis. Bordetella pertussis is going to increase my insulin, and it causes the disease known as whooping cough. But before the cough, there is a catarrhal phase, one to two weeks, followed by paroxysmal phase, two to five weeks. Why do you call it paroxysmal? Because we have paroxysms, we have attacks of what? Whooping cough, which sounds like this. <coughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop is the whooping cough. The cough doesn't whoop. The whoop is the inspiration that follows the cough. <laughs> whoop. Stop it, Mac. Give me macrolides. Pastorella multicida, shown here as the pastorella trying to make it to the ball, is a bacteria usually transmitted by animal bites. They are gram-negative organisms, the gram-cracker-negative devil, and take the shape of coxobacilli, the cockeyed rod. Pastorella grow best in the lab on charcoal yeast auger containing iron and cysteine, the charcoal in sync with iron and cysteine. It is a zoonotic bacterium, since it can be transmitted from animals to humans, especially by bites from cats and dogs, shown by the animals. Pastorella infections usually begin as cellulitis with purulent wound drainage, shown as the cell phone biting skin. It can spread from the wound to local structures like bones, potentially leading to osteomyelitis, the skeleton in flames. If it invades a joint space, it can lead to septic arthritis, the sepsis snake around King Arthur. For treatment, amoxicillin clavulinate can be used to treat uncomplicated soft tissue infections, shown as the Armorox pencil with cleaver. For more severe or invasive infections including septic arthritis or osteomyelitis, intravenous antibiotics are required, shown as the IV bag. Options include carbapenems or late-generation cephalosporins. So, remember, Pastorella multicida is a gram-negative coxobacillus that grows best on charcoal yeast auger with iron and cysteine. It is zoonotic and spreads especially by bites from cats and dogs. Infections can include cellulitis, osteomyelitis, and septic arthritis. Simple infections can be managed with amoxicillin clavulinate, while more invasive infections require intravenous antibiotics. Next, we have Pastorella, a gram-negative coccobacillus. Again, grows on charcoal yeast agar, enriched with iron and cysteine. It can cause cellulitis. This severe skin infection can go deeper into the bone and the bone marrow, osteomyelitis, which can spread to joints, septic arthritis. You can treat it orally if it's mild with amoxicillin clavulinate. But if it's severe, you're going to give me intravenous antibiotics, including ciftriaxone, including piperacillin tazobactam. Brucella is represented in this picmonic with the story of Bruce Lee. This is a genus of gram-negative bacteria exhibited by the gram-cracker-negative devil. This organism has a coxobacillus shape, shown by the cockeyed rods supporting the roller coaster. Brucella also displays the important identifying characteristics of being both oxidase and urease positive. This bacteria causes brucellosis, which is commonly transmitted by ingestion of unpasteurized milk, depicted by the cow squeezing unpasteurized milk from its udders, along with goat cheese, represented by the goat offering the plate of cheese. Once ingested, this organism makes its way inside macrophages, shown by the characters inside the Mac-Man carts. 
Brucella proliferates inside lymph nodes, causing lymphadenopathy, the lymph Lyme ad signs. Inability to completely eliminate the organism causes granulomas, the granny llama in some patients. Undulating fever, or a distinct pattern of rising and falling fevers, shown by the fever beaver on the undulating roller coaster, is a common symptom of brucellosis. Treatment includes antibiotics like doxycycline, demonstrated by the doxin cycline. Streptomycin and rifampin are two other antimicrobials that are commonly used in conjunction with doxycycline, with the doxycycline-streptomycin combination taking a small advantage over the doxycycline-rifampin regimen. Additionally, gentamicin, pictured as the magenta gentleman mouse, as well as fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin and sulfonamides like trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole can serve as adjuvants to therapy. So in summary, you should know that brucella is a gram-negative coxobacillus, which is commonly contracted via ingestion of unpasteurized milk and goat cheese. This organism resides inside macrophages and proliferates in lymph nodes, causing lymphadenopathy. In some patients, inability to completely eradicate the organism can cause granulomas to form. Undulating fever is a common symptom of brucellosis, which is treated with antibiotics like doxycycline, streptomycin, rifampin, and gentamicin. For brucella, remember bruce, gram-negative coccobacillus, unpasteurized milk, especially goat cheese. It hides inside macrophages, some granuloma action. Where's the granuloma? In your lymph nodes. Do I get lymphadenopathy? Yes, you can get lymphadenopathy. With the classic undulating fever, you treat with doxycycline or gentamicin. Please remember doxycycline and gentamicin because this is the same treatment as the next one, Francisella tularensis. Francisella tularensis, shown by the French tulips, is a gram-negative, the gram-negative devil, coxobacilli, the cockeyed rod. It is the cause of the disease tularemia, depicted by the tulips. Tularemia commonly presents with fever, the fever beaver, and lymphadenopathy, the lymph Lyme ad. This bacteria is a zoonotic bacteria transmitted by the deer fly, portrayed by the deer fly with deer antlers, and the dermacenter wood tick, the D tick with a demon tail on a piece of wood. A common scenario where the bacteria is passed to people is rabbit skinning, shown by the fever beaver wearing the rabbit skin suit. So to recap, Francisilla tularensis is a gram-negative coxobacilli. It is the cause of the disease tularemia, which commonly presents with fever and lymphadenopathy. This bacteria is a zoonotic bacteria transmitted by the deer fly and the dermacenter wood tick. And a common scenario where the bacteria is passed to people is during rabbit skinning. Francisella tularensis is a gram-negative coccobacillus. It gives me the fever beaver. Lymphadenopathy transmitted by dermacenter tick. Don't forget the deer fly. The practice of rabbit skinning increases my risk of Francisella tularensis. After you watch each picmonic, you can quiz yourself. After each of their 1,400 plus picmonics, there are multiple, multiple choice questions. Can you tell me the answers of these three questions? Let me know in the comment section. When you go to picmonic, you can browse their topics by subject, by system, or by your favorite book. There are many playlists there, and you can create your own playlists and even your own picmonics. Each day they will give you a list of tasks that you have to finish, and they will reward you. This is my methodology of studying from picmonic, spaced repetition. First, I watch the animation, and then I watch the story animation, because when you go to picmonic, you'll find two tabs. One is called educational, one is called story. I watch both, and then I watch the animation again, and then I pause and just stare at the picture. Then I close my eyes and try to use my imagination to put each part in place. Where was the fever beaver? Where was the tick? Where was the fly, etc. Then I open my eyes and see how I did. Did I get all of them right? Then I will solve the quiz after each picmonic, those lovely multiple choice questions. Then I get a blank piece of paper and write down the place of each character in that picmonic just from memory, without looking. I revisit the same topic tomorrow, five days later and a month later. And this topic will be ingrained in my memory for years. I've been using picmonic for more than 10 years and I absolutely love it. 
Learning is fun when you combine many senses together. Spaced repetition is very powerful. If you use my link, they will give you a free trial and a discount. If you have been watching my previous videos, you know that at the end of each microbiology pickmonic video, we have a comparison table. This was the last one. And today, let's do the same. Haemophilus influenzae, Bordetella pertussis, Pastorella multicida, Brucella, and Francisilla tularensis. All of them are gram-negative coccobacilli. Haemophilus influenzae is transmitted by droplets. Type B has the PRP capsule, positive coelang reaction, factor 5 is NAD, factor 10 is HEMA10. Staph aureus will provide you with factor 5. Clinically, otitis, bronchitis, epiglottitis, meningitis. Diagnosis, gramstein and culture, prophylaxis, avoid, vaccine, and rifampin prophylaxis. Treatment is ciftriaxone, especially for acute epiglottitis, because this is a true medical emergency. Don't forget the thumb print sign on x-ray. Next, bordetella pertussis, droplet transmission, catarrhal phase followed by paroxysmal phase, paroxysms, attacks of whooping cough with lymphocytosis and increased insulin, Inhibition of GI leads to increased cyclic AMP. Gram stain on culture. Avoid it. There is a vaccine. Treatment. Macrolides. Such as erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin. Avoid erythromycin in the very young. Pastorella, one of the zoonoses, cats and dogs, because pastorella lives in their saliva. If they bite you or rarely lick you, they can give you Pastorella. Diseases, cellulitis, go deeper, osteomyelitis, affect the joint, septic arthritis. Diagnosis, culture, especially on charcoal yeast agar enriched with iron and cysteine. Prophylaxis, avoidance. Treatment, amoxicillin clavulinate or piperacillin tazobactam. The first is oral, the second is intravenous. Next, brucella, unpasteurized milk, especially goat cheese. When people call me in the comment section, Hey, Medicosis, you are the goat. Well, thank you, but no thank you, because this can give me brucella. Before you know it, I'll suffer from undulating fever with granulomas in my lymph nodes if you biopsy them. Prophylaxis, avoidance, treatment, doxycycline or gentamicin. Last, Francisella tularensis, deer fly, dermis intertic, rabbit skinning or eating undercooked meat, or getting exposed to dust, especially after mowing your lawn in very rare cases. The disease is called toleremia, fever, and lymphadenopathy. Biopsy the lymph node. Francisella can grow on a buffered charcoal yeast agar. Prophylaxis, avoidance, and wear gloves if for some crazy reason you have to do this. Treatment is the same as brucella, although we prefer gentamicin to doxy. One last review. Try to pause and do it on your own. Here is Haemophilus influenzae characteristics. Gram-negative coccobacillus. PRP capsule in type B. Positive coelang reaction. They have the IgA protease to destroy your IgA. They grow on chocolate. Factor 5 is NAD. Factor 10 is HEMA10. Haemophilus influenzae diseases include pneumonia, acute epiglottitis with a positive thumb print sign, otitis and meningitis. Prophylaxis is with rifampin and the treatment is with the X, ciftriaxone. Three Xs, ciftriaxone. Next is Bordetella pertussis, gram-negative, coccobacillus, Baudet, Jean-Gu, agar, ADB ribosylating antibody toxin. When you inhibit the inhibitor, cyclic AMP is excited, which causes lymphocytosis. And then you have increased insulin. Don't forget the two phases. We start with catarrhal and then paroxysms of whooping cough. Next, Pastorella multicida, multi-killer. Gram-negative coccobacillus, charcoal yeast enriched with iron and cysteine. It's one of the zoonoses, cats and dogs. Diseases include cellulitis, infect my bone and bone marrow, osteomyelitis, 
Next to the bones, you have joints, septic arthritis. Treat with amoxicillin, clavulinate, or intravenous antibiotics, like piperacillin, tazobactam. Next, we have brucella. Here is bruce, gram-negative coccobacilli, unpasteurized milk, and goat cheese, lymphadenopathy. If you biopsy them, you have the granuloma and the famous undulating fever. You treat me with doxycycline or gentamicin. Francisella tularensis, gram-negative coccobacillus, fever, lymphadenopathy, deer fly, dermacenter tick, rabbit skinning. Treat me with gentamicin or doxycycline. Why is the beaver giving me that look? I've been learning medicine forever, but I've never found mnemonics better than Picmonic. They have more than 1400 animated mnemonics on their website. This is just a brief sample of the bacteria that they have picmonics for at picmonic.com. In addition to fungi, viruses, parasites, pharmacology, nephrology, pathology, anatomy, even biostatistics. They have picmonics on every subject imaginable. My favorites are microbiology, pharmacology, genetics, and OBGYN. Whether you're studying to be a doctor, nurse, PA, etc., Picmonic can help you, especially the fever beaver. And when you have a moment between classes or between rounds in the hospital, just open your phone. Picmonic is there in a lovely app. So what are you waiting for? Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Picmonic for sponsoring this video. The link is in the description box and in the first comment. This is Medicosis Perfectionist where medicine makes perfect sense and Picmonics where medicine is really fun.